Hi everybody, Scott here, and in this video I'm not going to be looking at crap from Asia like usual. I'm going to be looking at something that's probably cool from Canada. Uh, this is the Creation Crate. Now, I'm kind of familiar with this crate craze that's been going around. Uh, it's a subscription service where they send you something new every month. And it's usually a surprise, but within a certain very uh, tight set of parameters. For example, I got this Japan crate as a gift uh, recently. I got a three month subscription. This is like candy and other sorts of uh, delectables from Japan. This is not at all like that in that this is electronics. And this box should contain everything you need to do an electronics project. And if you sign up for this or you get it for someone as a gift, they would send you a new thing every month, something to build. And uh, it says Creation Crate. Now, I think this conceptually is pretty cool. I was a big fan of Japan crates, not because I'm big into candy, but just because I like the surprise. So this comes in a pretty plain white box and inside nicely bubble wrapped we have ah so this is going to be the project is a mood lamp mmm mood lamp and it comes with a nice set of directions this is the first time I'm opening this I'll just run through what's inside really quickly then I'm gonna set it all up and build the project for you all to see um, ah, it comes with a couple of stickers it comes with an Arduino which is uh, cool it's an Uno a resistor, some LEDs, some jumper wires, and a breadboard. Separate each wire. Ah. Oh, that's it. Just how to use your uh, jumpers. Let's get these components out here. Okay, so I was wondering what kind of tools would be required with this, and uh, first tool is a pair of scissors. It didn't look like uh, you really need anything in the way of tools to just breadboard this, obviously. Um, I do have my soldering iron standing by in case uh, this requires some soldering. All right, this is the surround for the lamp. A very cheap paper, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. And this is a support for it. All right, well, we'll get to that. Ah, rip the box. Ah, well. Okay, uh, your standard breadboard. Get all your components laid out. Uh, that's my best advice for someone starting out and get familiar with what they all are. One thing that's probably not necessary for this project, but that everyone should have if they're working on electronics, is a multimeter. Because if you're ever in doubt as to the value of one of your components, you can always just test it out. And this says 2.185 kilo ohms. It's supposed to be a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. And that is within tolerance, and it's all good. Okay, so let's put this thing together. I found the instruction booklet to be more than sufficient for the task of assembling and programming the Mood Light project. And while I appreciate its brevity, for students and people new to electronics, it does miss some opportunities to educate the user. And this is a quick and easy project intended for a beginner. On the other hand, there's always Google, and finding stuff out for yourself can be quite rewarding. The book is divided into a few simple sections, the first being the parts list. The pictures of the actual parts are a big plus over the diagrammatic drawings you sometimes see in project kits, as is the color printing. There's a friendly welcome to the Creation Crate Club, along with a terse description of the final product, but I suppose that's all you really need, and the lack of detail actually adds a bit of anticipation to the construction. While reviewing this kit, I'm trying to approach everything as if it's my first project. I recall being intimidated by a breadboard my first time using one. There are so many holes, are they all connected to each other, and if so, in what ways? And while the term light-dependent resistor is pretty self-explanatory, a quick paragraph about how it works and what range of resistance values it provides would be a great addition. In fact, this goes for all the components. I mean, almost everyone knows that LEDs give off light, but perhaps they didn't know that the longer lead is the positive one and that reversing polarity may kill it. At the bottom of page 4, a URL and password are provided for a clearer view of the diagram. While I didn't have a problem following the images in the booklet, it's nice that they provide it. Now what? In order for the mood lamp to run, you need to program it. Electronics is a combination of hardware and programming. You can't have a working project with only half. Now, I don't want to get all nitpicky here, but that's a bit of a misnomer. Electronics projects do not necessarily involve programming. A similar mood light could be made with discrete components. But at any rate, I enjoy the positive, encouraging tone of the manual. 
A brief description is given for downloading and installing the Arduino IDE, that's Interactive Development Environment, basically a user-friendly way of editing, debugging, and compiling code. Okay, I'll admit, I was surprised to see code in the manual complete with comments. The last time I entered code from a book into a computer was in the pre-web days on an Apple 2GS or some such. I mean, maybe Lisp in college. I've never found rote retyping to be very instructive in that it was always a chore to get through before trying to interpret and understand the code, usually while changing things around and fixing bugs of my own making. For me, poking a stick into it and seeing how it broke was always far more interesting and fun than picking it apart to death. But hey, that's just me. Everyone learns and has fun differently, and fortunately the people over at Creation Create provide a downloadable version of the code at the same URL that was shown earlier. In the Almost There section, the URL and password are repeated to give the user access to a Mac driver. That's followed by a brief description of uploading the sketch, which is the program, to the Arduino from inside the IDE. They also provide some tips on dealing with common errors, like ensuring that statements end in a semicolon and looking out for missing or extra brackets. Hardware errors are also covered, including one mistake that I'm going to make later in the video, which is ensuring that all of your pins are lined up on the correct rails. Finally, they provide some homework-style exercises, asking things like, which variable's value would you change to alter the brightness of the lamp, and creating an ambient light limit for the activation of the lamp. Last but not least is a purposefully vague sneak peek at the next month's project. I like that. The weird thing about it, though, is that it shows the same Uno, LEDs, breadboard, and jumpers as were used in the mood lamp. However, the Creation Crate website says that each box comes with an Uno R3 and that everything you need is included in the box. So, unless I've got this wrong, if you sign up for more than a single month, you'll end up with multiple breadboards, Arduinos, well, Unos, and probably other stuff as well. For my money, I'd rather get the repeatable components in my first box and then build on them from there with more elaborate components in the subsequent deliveries. You know, alphanumeric LCDs, lasers, sonar transducers, those sorts of things. Since these projects are breadboarded, I doubt that people are going to leave each project fully assembled anyway. While the mood lamp is cool, without an external power supply, case, and a soldered PCB, it's not exactly going to become a permanent fixture in my living room. And while having a couple of Unos on hand is a good thing, for those signing up for a 12-month subscription, well, that's 12 Unos. Alright, despite those couple of small issues I had with the rather uh, light instruction manual and the fact that you get an Arduino with every order, I would overall recommend the Creation Crate. Now I'm skipping ahead here in the video to the end because as you can see it's already built and working. If you want to stick around you can watch me actually assemble it and then test it out. But I want to give my final thoughts now in case you just wanted the unboxing. This is a really cool concept for someone just getting into electronics. Obviously, this project is not very complicated, and I can't foresee that the subsequent projects will be terribly in-depth. But for students, uh, in fact, for anyone just getting into electronics, this is, a, this is a pretty good thing. I like it. It's, um, it's definitely more useful and more educational than a lot of the other crates that are out there. So if you're looking to spark some interest and fun in a uh, niece or nephew, grandchild, what have you, uh, definitely consider the Creation Crate. And now if you're interested in seeing how this was put together, uh, let's go to that. The first step is placing the LEDs, and I'm going from left to right starting with red. The manual notes the longer lead, which is positive, should be oriented towards the lower side of the breadboard, with the negative lead of each LED eventually connected via jumpers to the negative rail at the top. I left the LEDs a bit farther apart than in the diagram. That's not necessary, but good practice to avoid short circuits and then bent them in towards each other to keep the three colors as close together as possible. The manual specifically states the longer U-shaped wire should be used to bring each LED's positive connection over to the right. Electrically speaking, you could use any old jumper, however these will give the paper lantern a nice flat surface to sit on. The short gray jumpers are then used to connect the negative of each LED to the common power rail. If you're not familiar with breadboards, each row of sockets at the top and bottom, labeled with red and blue lines here, have continuity to each other. These are customarily used to provide power to a circuit, and that is the case for this project, but can be used for anything you choose. The rest of the board is then split into columns on the top and bottom halves, with each column having five sockets of continuity. The next step is placing the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. When applying components to a breadboard, you can bend the leads any which way you need to get them to fit, though sometimes bending them too far can snap them or crack the component. But this resistor won't be a problem in either case. Though the board has columns numbered 1 through 64 and rows lettered A through J, which correspond to the instructions, it doesn't really matter where you place the components, just as long as they're connected correctly in the electrical sense. 
I didn't follow the numbering, but the important part here is that I'm connecting one lead of light dependent resistor to one pin of the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. Here polarity doesn't matter. I'm going to skip ahead for a moment to talk about the light dependent resistor, or LDR, also called a photoresistor. It's made of a semiconductor material that becomes more conductive in the presence of light, which is to say that its resistance decreases in proportion to the amount of light striking it, and likewise resistance increases the darker it gets. Different models of LDRs can have different resistance ranges for different light values, and this can of course be measured using an ohmmeter, part of most any multimeter. So here we saw that the LDR included in the project has a resistance of about 1.2 kilo ohms under the fairly bright lights which I'm using to shoot this video, and about 3.6 to 4.2 kilo ohms under my finger, which of course doesn't achieve perfect darkness. You could test it out under direct sunlight compared to total darkness to get a better idea of its overall practical range. Getting back to the assembly, the components are done and it's time to connect up the Arduino itself. While the diagram in the manual shows which sockets on the UNO are connected to which sockets on the breadboard, it doesn't give any indication as to what each connection to the UNO does or is capable of. For that, it can be valuable to skip ahead to the code where they give a brief description of each pin in the comments. Incidentally, this breadboard is a cheapie, in the sense that not all the sockets capture the pins of the jumpers and components very well. If you encounter a loose socket, you can just move it to the next one in the same column, and the same goes for the power rails. Conversely, some sockets were just too tight and wouldn't accept the pin. By the way, here's where not separating your jumpers can make for a neater project. Digital I.O. pins 9, 10, and 11 on the Arduino are used to power the blue, green, and red LEDs respectively, and the connections are right next to each other on either end. Of course, it does make it a bit more understandable if you use the same color jumper as each color LED, but that comes down to personal preference. The Uno has a couple of pins to supply plus 5 volt power, as well as a couple of ground or negative pins. Those are connected to the positive and negative power rails on the breadboard. Another connection is made from analog input pin 0 on the UNO to the LDR. Finally, a jumper is connected from the positive power rail to the end of the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor opposite the LDR, and another is connected from the LDR to the negative rail. The paper lantern is assembled by jamming the support frame into the back hole, so that on the other side the two pins of the frame can line up with the two rings at the top. The shell is then moved up the support frame until it catches on the two indents at the end. The lantern shell is then placed over the LEDs. Now, it doesn't connect to the breadboard and it just kind of sits on there. I suppose it doesn't much matter also, but you can't center the LEDs because the bar across the bottom gets in the way, which makes one half of the finished light brighter than the other. All right, so as soon as I cut away, I took time to actually hook this up to the laptop. Um, one thing I had a problem with, and I just want you to be aware in case uh, you're getting this for yourself or for a loved one and they complain it doesn't work, this apparently uses a USB to serial chip that, is, that does not have drivers included with the standard Arduino package um, if you download it from arduino.cc. So I had to look it up and download some fairly random uh, driver off a Chinese website. Nothing against Creation Crate really, I mean it's not a huge problem, this is the sort of thing you run into all the time when you're working on electronics projects, so you know it's a good learning experience. But um, it would be good if Creation Crate could host that driver. I don't know if it would be a licensing issue or whatnot, but uh, that was a little bit of a stumbling block and something that uh, would not make for a smooth experience overall. With the correct driver installed, it was just a matter of compiling the code and uploading the program to the Uno, which went off without a hitch. As soon as the upload completed and the Uno rebooted to run its new program, the lamp started lighting. Or, well, it did once I put the green jumper in the correct location. I also had to replace the red LEDs jumper because the cheap breadboard was holding it very loosely and it fell out whenever the whole thing was moved around. So here's what's going on with the LEDs. With red, green, and blue lights, you can create most any color in the visible spectrum by varying the relative intensity of each light. For example, a deep purple can be created with the red LED at 50% brightness, the blue LED at 100% brightness, and the green off completely. Likewise, yellow could be created by mixing red and green, and so on. While you could dim an LED or incandescent light bulb by varying the voltage supplied to it, here the UNO is just supplying 5 volts to the LEDs, but it's turning the power on and off very rapidly. This is called pulse width modulation, and this makes the LEDs appear dimmer. Usually this happens faster than the human eye can see, but at very low brightness levels, or particularly when scanning your eyes back and forth across the LEDs, you can see the flicker. The program works by gradually cycling each LED through its full range of brightness, but in an offset way that causes different colors to appear. In theory, if the brightness of all three LEDs was altered in sync, it would merely create white light at various intensities, which is an equal mix of red, green, and blue. The offset causes all different hues to appear. 
However, as you can see, the green LED supplied with the kit glows so dimly that it barely affects the coloring of the lantern at all. I'm guessing that's because the green is a gallium phosphide LED which is less efficient than the probable indium gallium nitride blue and gallium arsenide phosphide red. Now I'm just guessing as to the chemistry, but the point I'm trying to make is that not all LEDs are created equal, and given the same voltage current and PWM duty cycle, they're not going to light equally. This gives an interesting opportunity for experimentation because it could be fixed in the program, or in fact at the hardware level. This project only took me about half an hour to build and get lit up, but even something as simple as this mood light could lead to hours of modifications and improvements. And for me anyway, that's where most of the fun lies when it comes to electronics. I mean, heck, if I wasn't spending time making this video, I'd probably solder all the components together and stick them into a project case. Maybe using transistors to drive a larger number of LEDs and perhaps adding a mic to make it sound sensitive and putting LEDs at the top of the lantern globe would make for more even lighting and maybe add a remote control. Now I'm kind of wishing that's how the creation crates work. They start you out in the first month with a simple project, but over the months that project blossoms until you have something really elaborate to play with in the end. Well, thanks for watching my review and build of the first Creation Crate monthly project. If there's anything else you'd like to see me review, take apart, and or put together, please let me know in the comments. Check out my blog at s.co.tt for more information, and if you want to stay on top of future videos, please consider subscribing.